Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Southern Fried Podcast, a production of the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. I'm Rex Nelson, Senior Editor of the Democrat Gazette, and we welcome you. We are taking this thing outside of central Arkansas, not the taping, but the subject. We're, we're right here in our usual Little Rock studios, but having come all the way down from northeast Arkansas is Judge John Nelson of Mississippi County, and we call it the Mississippi County Miracle. I've written a lot about it, but we want to talk about it today. Judge, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you, Rex. I appreciate you asking me to be here. I've been looking forward to it. Yeah, we, we're looking forward to talking about it. You know, uh, uh, not Mississippi County in particular, but Northeast Arkansas as a whole. I attended last week, or a week before last, the annual meeting of the Arkansas Press Association in Jonesboro. And uh, one of our speakers uh, was Chancellor Shields from Arkansas State University. And, and I thought he made a very interesting comment in talking to our group. Todd Shields spent many years at the University of Arkansas in Fayetteville before moving to Northeast Arkansas. And he said, and he mentioned the Mississippi County steel industry in particular, but he said, this area of the state reminds me of Northwest Arkansas about 25 years ago, just on the verge of something really, really big. Do, do, you, have this, do you have the same feeling? Well, I, I think that's a huge compliment. I'd like to think that we're headed in that direction. And, you know, every time I think we're about to do it, we surpass that goal and we move on to something else and we get that and it just continues to explode. It seems sometimes like a dog chasing a car, you know, careful for you, what you wish for because you might get it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to start with steel and then we'll move into aerospace and some other areas that you're starting to focus on now. But of course, much has been written in recent years about the steel boom in northeast Arkansas. Of course, we have, uh, you know, going back several decades, what, which I refer to as the the legacy plants in the northern part of the county, which were Nucor, Arkansas, and Nucor, Yamato, uh, the two Nucor plants there. But when I came up to visit you last year, I found out that even they have spent about $1 billion, with a B, dollars on expansion and improvements since the pandemic. And then, of course, in the south part of the county, uh, you had Big River Steel bought. You had Big River bought by U.S. Steel. Yes. Big River 2 also owned by U.S. Steel. That explosion, high bar about to uh, be built to, to make rebar in Osceola in the south part of the county now. So, Suddenly, you've got action north and south in your county when it comes to uh, comes into the steel making, and uh, it, it just it keeps being bigger and bigger. And when Big River Two goes online, Mississippi County will be the largest steel producing county in America. Judge, I was born and raised in this state. We had this discussion when I came up to visit you, and. Who of us, you know, our age or so could have imagined growing up in this state that Arkansas would one day be the center of American steel making? That that makes me pretty proud as an Arkansas. Oh, absolutely. And you know, they would have they would have called you crazy if you'd have said that back in the sixties. And yeah. you know, even back then we were the number one in uh in rain fed cotton production. Yep, absolutely. You've gone from the number one cotton producing county, and cotton's still important, by the way, as is all row crop agriculture, but to the number one steel producing county. It's it's an amazing story. Uh, you know, for those not quite as familiar uh, as some of us are, uh, kind of walk me through a little bit about uh, what you went through, uh, the closure of um, Acre Air Force Base in Blyville, which I covered as a Washington correspondent back in the 1980s, the rapid loss of population, and then the build back of jobs, the loss of thousands of jobs, and now the addition of thousands of jobs. Kind of walk through that history oh, a little yes. bit. Of course, we've been an agrarian community for a long, long time, and 
you know, the 60s and 70s came along and mechanization hit agriculture. That emptied a lot of our population. And of course, BRAC closed our Air Force base. That moved a tremendous amount of people out. And if it couldn't get any worse, NAFTA come along and took our manufacturing away yeah. from us. And that's when we decided we was going to have to do something. Uh, it was a lot of the leaders got together and uh, decided to come up with an economic development foundation. And we're the first county in the state of Arkansas to finance the, an economic development foundation with our sales tax. So we, we're in the game. Uh, we taxed ourselves, and uh, you had a lot of big believers in it. You had some of the naysayers, and I think that we've, uh, I think we've cleared the air on that. Uh, it was always said that, you know, by some that we'd never invest any money, that we just end up with a bank full of money that could go nowhere, but it's not that way. We, we've invested and invested and invested. Yeah. And, and what Nucor did when it came in and, and made those initial investments in steel making, they proved that you have a great workforce in that part of the country. Um, uh, trying to, trying to give a fast version of history, but, uh, John Carini, uh, the late John Carini that was with Nucor, uh, loved that workforce. And when he left Nucor, he started Big River Steel and he said, I'm coming to Mississippi County. I'm coming to Northeast Arkansas because the workers are so good. And we've continued to see the expansion since then because of the quality of your workforce in that part of the country. Oh yeah. John Carini was a huge loss to us. Uh, he was, he's, he is the one that really put steel here in Mississippi County. Now, new core, both of the new cores, they're our cornerstone. And mm -hmm. uh, that's our bedrock that we started off of. They're great partners for Mississippi County, and we appreciate them very much. But, you know, the first one came in, and I think a lot of people thought it was an anomaly. Right. The second one came in, new core Yamato, and they said, well, that's kind of a sister company to them. But, you know, BRS come along, and people really started paying attention and now we got US Steel, we got High Bar. Uh, we're ju it just doesn't seem like it's gonna slow down. You know, after I came up and spent a couple of days with you and came back and started doing my research, one of the people we had visited with at his office there on the square in Osceola was Dave Stickler of High Bar, the founder of High Bar. He's quite so a character. I, so I Google this guy and I find this story that said the headline, this was a Forbes story, the Steve Jobs of American steelmaking. And I thought, my gosh, the Steve Jobs of American steelmaking is living in Osceola, Arkansas. Yeah, right absolutely. Now. You know, he came here as a kind of a financier. He was the money man for John Carini. Mm -hmm. And when Mr. Carini passed away, well, he then he took the helm and he's big into steelmaking. I yeah. mean, that seems like his thing now. And he really enjoys it. He's very uh, excited about high bar being coming online in about 12 months. So you're about 12 months away from yes, that. Yes, yeah. And Big River Steel's number two is getting very close now. Right? Oh, yeah, uh, Big River Steel along. will start production the fourth quarter of this year. That's what I thought. That's yeah. what I thought. That is a $3 billion, there's a B again, uh, plus investment. And I might note that is the largest private one-time capital investment in Arkansas believe, history. Yeah, yes, actually, we've got number one and number two, mm -hmm. so... Uh, and we're working on maybe it's something that might be number three. Good, good. <laughs> I, I'm excited to hear about that. Now, let's get back to something uh, that I've written about that you and I discussed at length because you are addressing this, and that is we got good workforce in that part of the country, but a lot of them are driving in and they don't live there. They work four days on, four days off and go back to their families, might come from Western Tennessee, Northern Mississippi, even Southern Illinois, Western Kentucky, all over that part of the county. Judge, how do we get them to move their families here to Arkansas and live in Arkansas and be Arkansans, pay Arkansas property taxes? Well, one thing that we've learned along this road that we're on is that build it and they will come does not apply to industrial development. Mm -hmm. And, and we've, we've understood that we're, we, we understand how all it works. So the main thing is to start the industry here. You got to have it first. And the second thing is you rebuild your population. So we're working on that. We've got several things, uh, that's in the works, probably our, uh, 
our leading uh, project for that is the Live Here, Work Here, which uh, if you can go under contract with, uh, with a 501c3, grow, grow Mississippi County, and they contribute to that, well then one of their employees, if they want to build a house in Mississippi County, Arkansas, they can go get a construction loan. Let's just say it's a $300,000 house, build it, and then transfer it into a mortgage, except the mortgage will just be 270000 Wow. 10% goes 30, into 000. a second mortgage. Yeah. They stay working for that company in that house for four years, and the second mortgage goes away. Wow. that That is quite a program. And I understand now you have seen the construction in recent years of about 150 new houses in a county where there were, you know, in the years before that, only a handful of new houses that were constructed in the county. We haven't done this in probably 40 years. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, right now we've got, out of those 150, or I'm going to say it's a little bit higher than that now, 91 of those are the outcome of the Live Here, Work Here program. So uh, that just shows that that uh, program is a success. Yeah, absolutely it is. 150 new houses. One of the things uh, we did when I was up there, drove through a whole new subdivision in Osceola, which, like you said, has not happened in decades. Uh, I think over $21 million now in new construction. And I, I know you have also done things from that quality of life uh, investment uh, Osceola passed a tax to build uh, a water park, among other things. So there are th also, in addition to the program where you pay off 10% of your mortgage, you've also got some quality of life investments going into things like parks and uh, uh, other other things along those lines. Oh, yes. And, and, and outside of uh, just entertainment, as far as those... Uh, those things that enrich the neighborhoods. We've got a group here that's working on the National Cold War Center. Mm -hmm. And in December of 23, it was officially designated by Congress through the NDAA uh, as the National uh, Cold War Center. Yeah. I, so I, we got I, the designation. I, and I think that is just, I think that is just huge, Judge. I, I, I have written a lot about... Uh, the Cold War Center, because I'm a history nerd, among other things, and it, it excites me. But, you know, the I think it potentially, and they are raising the money now. It's for real. It's going to happen. Uh, and I think the potential to draw visitors, in addition to adding a quality of life amenity for those who live there, is, is just incredible. And when you look at it, uh, and I'm going to go all the way up, I'll go down to Crittenden County, too, and come all the way up that Interstate 55 corridor. But I've written columns again. I said, let's start with the fact that the tallest building outside of central Arkansas, outside of Little Rock, and people usually going to guess northwest Arkansas. No, it's in West Memphis. you got a 20-story hotel there. People can now stay in Arkansas rather than uh, West Memphis. Down there, they're about to do a new expanded Sultana Museum at Marion, which is incredible. And then when you come up into Mississippi County, you've got all that's going on in Wilson. You've got the Johnny Cash Boyhood Home at Dice. Add the Cold War Center to that, and I, I think you've got quite a little tourism corridor oh, through yeah, there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, our board members are very serious about this. They're, they're, are, they are planning on building something as as good or better than the Marshall Museum in Fort Smith. Wow. Crystal Bridges. It's great, yeah. And recently we had uh, Asa Hutchinson accepted a position on the advisory board as well as Jonna Mendez, the wife of the late Tony Mendez, mm. both former CIA agents during the Cold War. Oh, wow. And, you know, Tony Mendez, he's the one that uh, rescued the 53 hostages and gained world fame. So they also made a movie, Argo, yeah. about them. So uh, we're very excited about that. Dr. Kristen Osterman of the Wilson Center in Washington, D.C. is on that board. He plays a huge role in it. And... Uh, we just, uh, 
I, I see that it's going to be a, a, a realization come through in the next maybe couple of years. Yeah, that that it, and it just adds to what's always going on. I was back up in the spring, uh, by the way, and uh, you know I love the contrast of. Uh, you go down US 61 and you've got bumper to bumper traffic with construction going on of Big River Steel too. And then just a few miles away, you've got what they've done at Wilson and you've got high dollar people coming in now from all over the country to stay at the Lewis Hotel, eat at the Wilson Cafe. It's really a neat contrast to see all that activity going on in one part of your county right oh there. it is and we are we're working on the infrastructure that's one of our infrastructure and housing is two of our challenges and i had one of the board members from the foundation call yesterday and say we've got to do something about this traffic mm-hmm. and good and problem to have isn't <laughs> yes, it? <laughs> yes it is after that's many gro- years of losing population that's yeah. a growing pain is what that yeah. is and that's not too bad to have yeah you you in fact you told me when i came up and visited you how you would sometimes uh sit at the stoplight uh, in Osceola at about 5 a.m. in the morning, right, yep, and watch the right. traffic yep. line up there. Yep, nine cars can get through that green light, but number 10 <laughs> runs it. <laughs> and there's a policeman right there wearing them out. Yeah, yeah, but early in the morning, you've got that kind of activity between steel workers and construction workers. That's well, right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's that's really exciting. Uh, all right, we've talked about the steel industry. Uh, let's go back to the old uh, Air Force Base. I mean, you've got some of the longest runways in the world uh, right there now. and uh, Over two miles long and, and 300 feet wide. Absolutely. And so you are now talking about we don't want to just be steel, even though that's huge. We've got great potential of aerospace development. So. We've got a diamond in the rough in the former Acre Air Force Base. We've got 40 companies there now that's calling the Aeroplex home. And two weeks ago, we hosted the Arkansas Aerospace and Defense Alliance, and that's been their first meeting that was held outside of central Arkansas or northwest Arkansas. So wow. it's uh, It's got a huge amount of potential. We're recruiting industry right now. We've got We've got three that we're talking with. And, That's great. Uh, I think we're going to have one of them call them home just very, very soon. That That is very exciting. Now, I think you've gotten something like $2 million in federal funds to do some cleanup around the base. That's and, true. In the old former K-Port housing residential area for the for the soldiers at the at the air base, we, uh, we acquired $2 million in federal funds for cleaning up and establishing new residential housing. And we've got to have that for our growing workforce. Absolutely. Really, really exciting to see what's going on. Now, uh, another thing we did when I when I spent a couple of days with you, and I'm trying to cover a lot of territory in our 30 minutes here. It's going to go very quickly because there is so much going on. But Judge, as you know, uh, I made very clear um, I'm, I'm into uh, – uh, historic uh, preservation. Um, you've got courthouses in both Blyville and, and Osceola. I'm into downtown redevelopment and uh, so much potential. Uh, you look at the old buildings in both Blyville and Osceola for, for downtown redevelopment as things continue yes. to grow. Both both historic buildings that's seen a lot and very much a pride for our county. Uh, recently, uh, we renovated and made an addition onto the Blyville Courthouse, and uh, it's turned out very well. Uh, we received uh, the Alumni Award from the University of Arkansas Faye School, Faye Jones School of Architecture, for the preservation, design, and adaptive reuse. So, mm. we're very proud of that. And also, uh, recently in uh, January of 23, it received the Outstanding New Construction in a historic setting from Preserve, Arkansas. And you know, Preserve, Arkansas here in Little Rock, they're the leading uh, advocate of Absolutely. restoring old historic buildings. Absolutely. I, you were kind enough to walk me through your addition uh, to the Blyville Courthouse, uh, what you've done there. Uh, Mississippi County, by the way, is one of 10 counties in Arkansas with two county seats, going back to the old days when floods 
made it important to have a northern district and a southern district so people could get to the courthouse. So I loved what I saw in Blyville. And then, of course, as I've always told you, Osceola, the outside with that copper dome is frankly my favorite courthouse building in the state. It's the most beautiful, dome. beautiful courthouse in the state of Arkansas. And we did with this two years ago, we put a new copper dome on it. Mm -hmm. We're also moving some funds uh, over there right now, and we're we've got an architect under contract, and we're going to make some we're going to make some improvements there in that building. And, and both of those cities and entrepreneurs in both of those cities are are trying. You you're starting to see some people trying to put new build businesses, uh, put uh, some renovations in old buildings that have been empty for years in, in both Blyville, uh, some parks downtown, both Blyville and Osceola, right? Oh, now. absolutely. And you know, that is what has kind of put an end to that north and south. Yeah, uh, yeah fight that you always <laughs> have. We, it's such a big county geographically, <laughs> yeah. and it really was divided for many, many years. But yeah. we've got so much growth now, we got to get along. Yeah. So uh, we are trading out, and uh, we're, we're coming to terms with that. So I think that's all behind us. Now, I mean, you're here in Little Rock today. You're visiting with me. Uh, talk a little bit about what you're doing uh, to attract new residents, attract new industry, the the marketing strategies. You know, usually, uh, uh, and I know this is still important, but, you know, typically my grandfather was once a county judge, as I told you, over in Prairie County way back in the 1930s. But you think of a county judge in the past, you'd think, well, fix my road, but you're into marketing now. You're into promoting Mississippi County statewide, nationally, and globally. And uh, so talk a little bit about your marketing efforts and whether you are really seeing an uptick in interest in Mississippi County. Rex, we just have to. That's what we have to do. And it, it, we're marketing not only in the state and across the county, but uh, I mean across the country, but around the globe. Uh, we, we've got marketing ef efforts in Singapore right now. We have them in Canada. We're uh, discussing maybe a couple, couple of other counties. Uh, June coverage reached more than two billion people locally or globally, and uh, it's all, largely on the strength of the Arkansas Aeroplex because it has so much potential and there's so much there. Uh, and the aerospace industry is a growing business right now, and you know Arkansas and the governor's office is back in that. Uh, in a big way. Mm -hmm. So I think what uh, we've decided to do is to do our part and uh, capitalize on that diamond we have right here in Mississippi County. And, and, and people are are starting to bite, you think, uh, starting to show some interest? You I think you'll find a company that will uh, be there within the next, say, month or so and park eight 757s out on the runway so, yeah. or on the ramp. So We've got a, which sounds like a big deal, but we've got a huge amount of ramp space, and that won't that won't take up, uh, that won't make a dent in it. So yeah. Wow. We've got other companies that we're showing right now, and uh, I think we're going to take the Aeroplex and do just what we did with the Mississippi River. Yeah, that's that's exciting. So you add what's going on to steel to aerospace, it it could be quite a combination, and and Chancellor Shields could indeed be right about the next boom area of the state. In fact, back to steel again. We were talking about Dave Stickler. You know, when we were talking that day, uh, you'll remember he told me, he said, well, I'd, I'd like to see this company initially, if our initial plant goes well, High Bar have three to five plants. And I said, could they all be in Arkansas? And he said, yeah, they could. He, I love Arkansas. Oh, I love the workforce. Dave has been a great partner and cheerleader for Mississippi County. He uh, he loves it here. He, can, he plans on continuing to expand, but he's doing great things within our school and with our, within our communities. And, uh, and he's become a really good friend of mine. You mentioned you mentioned schools, and, and they are so important. Uh, workforce training is important, and and one benefit you have is uh, Arkansas Northeastern College, which is based there in Blyville. Uh, they have really, and our, our community colleges have to do that. One one thing that a two year college differs from a four year college or university is a two year college can be a lot more flexible. Uh, they can turn on a dime 
it takes a long time at a four-year institution. I used to work in higher education, so I can promise you that. But more flexibility at the two-year level, and it seems to me Arkansas Northeastern has been very responsive to the needs of the steel industry and training the kind of workers that they really need oh, right yes, now. Oh, yes, they have. And Dr. Hegel is the president of the college. He's done a great job. He is. He's working with industry. He's working with the county. He's working with our Industrial Development Foundation and pulling all that together. He's probably got the premier workforce uh, training center of anywhere in the state of Arkansas. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but it's got the lowest tuition and the highest starting wage for any two to four year college in the state. And that includes the medical school. So wow. Wow. We are, uh, we're, th they are, without them, I just don't think we could be where we are today. Yeah. Yeah, that uh, that says a lot. Uh, and you know, recently, um, uh, and I know there's there's potential there. Recently, what had been the beautiful grounds that we toured of uh, the Delta School there at Wilson was donated to Arkansas Northeastern College, and I think I read Judge. That was the most valuable donation ever to a two-year school oh, that, anywhere yeah. in the country. Yes, and you just have to be there to see it, just exactly yeah. how nice of a school that is. And uh, and, and ANC was offered that uh, campus and accepted it. Uh, there's a board now that's been put together. To I was going to ask where that's going. It's going to be right there by several years still. Yeah. Now, so and we need the extra room, too. Yeah. But, uh, you know the the part that served as the high school there, and and Mr. Lawrence, uh, you know he had uh, been developing that over many years and mm -hmm. was putting about two million dollars a year in it. Uh, I'm talking about subsidizing. Yeah, it. yeah, and, exactly. Uh, he just couldn't scale it up as quickly as Galen Lawrence Jr. wants to scale <laughs> wants to up. Scale up so, yeah. uh, we're yeah. we're going to take it over, and then we're going to see what we can do with it. We need the room. Our workforce development is uh, already crowded, so and we need another place for high school students to come in and excel. So. Uh, you're just going to have to give us a little bit and find out what we're, which way it's going to go. Absolutely. Well, it's it's a beautiful campus. Like I said, a huge gift to the uh, to the college, and uh, I know that you are potentially going to do great things with it. You mentioned um, Galen Lawrence Jr., and I'll go back to that because I talked about the high spending people coming from all over the country now. Uh, and again, I've written extensively about that, but the quick version for those who aren't familiar with it is Galen Lawrence is one of the largest landowners in the country, owns seven wineries in California, among other things now, all of which you can get at the Wilson Cafe if you're into, into Great wine. Great restaurant. Yeah, Great it restaurant. really, if you're into wine, by the way. But he bought uh, the R.E.L. Wilson company, the Wilson Plantation at one time, was the largest cotton plantation in the world. He basically bought it for the land, but it came with this company town of Wilson. And rather than just letting that company town die, he thought, well, I'm going to make this kind of a model little Delta community. And as poured, as you said, uh, millions of his own dollars into that town over the past decade or so. Oh, yeah. He has just redefined that town. Now, the Wilsons did a great job with it. It's uh, got the, the two-door. Yeah, uh, English two-door style. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, And it's beautiful as it was, but he has just really uh, taken that and run with it. He's done a great job. We, he's putting in an 18-hole golf course right now. There's residential housing going up. Uh, the school, like he's talking about, and they have entertainment there on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. It's a great place to visit. It's a destination spot for someone wanting to vacation. Oh, it really is. Come it, out. They, they are advertising in some of the top lifestyle magazines in the country. So uh, suddenly again, after, after years, decades in fact, uh, from about the 1950 census on, you go back to the 1950 census when you had to have so many sharecroppers and tenant farmers to raise cotton to now Mississippi County has less than half of the population that it had then. 
But I, I feel like you've turned that corner, and, and well, everything seems to be going up yeah, right we're, now. We had a high there of about 85, 86,000 people, and uh, and then we dipped to 40, and I think right now we're probably at 38. But I get mm-hmm. more phone calls about people mad because the traffic is so bad, and <laughs> the restaurants are all full. We don't have enough restaurants. Of course, there's no houses, and it has just changed. It has really blossomed in the last five or six years. Yeah, and, and of course— Many years ago, before you and I even met, you know, in my column, uh, I, I write about food sometimes. You you saw how I like to eat. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I did declare Blyville as the barbecue capital of Arkansas <laughs> because it had more per capita barbecue places uh, per capita than any town I could think of. So Hell yeah. I, I still think of Blyville as my barbecue capital oh, of Arkansas. Oh, that's the way I think. And uh, Bob Hossel, who I graduated uh, high Bob's school, a good friend. Yeah, he's taken over the yeah. Dixie Pig and a Cream Castle Castle is, burn, but built back. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. B- uh, better than ever. And yeah. so they're in business and uh, make the best barbecue. Either one of those makes the best barbecue you're going to buy in the Mid-South. Yeah, both just uh, both just great places and classic places that have been around for decades. Uh, one of them, uh, Cream Castle, is already in our Arkansas Food Hall of Fame. Uh uh, which I've been involved with since its founding, and uh, I guarantee you Dixie Pig will be joining them at some point in that Arkansas Food Hall of Fame. Judge, I knew it was going to go fast. We're, we're about out of time. What, what message would you like to leave on behalf of Mississippi County to any potential capital investors or any in- uh, potential new residents that might be listening. Out well, there. you know, I had a group down here about two months ago, and they were they were investors and they were talking residential areas. And I told them, I said, "Look, now we've made modest growth. Uh, we've done things that we hadn't done in forty years. Not big things. I'm talking small things, but I think we've set a trend line. And uh, even though they were small, nothing really big to brag about for the, in other parts of the state." But we're doing something that we had never done before. And uh, once you get that trend line established, then I think what we're going to do is see nothing but growth. Yeah. Well, I've never had a bad visit to Mississippi County, so, Judge, I'll be back to see you real soon. Oh, a good deal. Thank you, Rex. And you come down and I'll buy you a pig sandwich. Uh, All right. That sounds great. Mississippi County Judge John Allen Nelson, our guest today. Thank you for listening to... The Southern Fried Podcast, a production of the Arkansas Democrat Gazette.